You may be seated. Okay, good morning. Let the record reflect that the defendant is present along with counsel for the defendant, assistant state attorneys, both sides ready to proceed. Okay, you got your first witness for the morning on cue. Okay, all right. Let's bring the jury in. I'm sorry, Judge. We need a few minutes to find that person's call. We're going to get any notice of what we call this witness. So, we're going to anticipate it. Let me say this, folks. Uh, it would be very helpful, and I can't order the state to do this, uh, to, to give a list for the week of 40 names so they can have 40 files. But if we're going to play this game, then I'm going to play a game. And the game is going to be called 35 Minutes for Lunch, and we're going to go late. Uh, so I, I am not going to have a jury waiting around for folks for searching, searching files. But if we're going to play that game, then I will play the game. And I can guarantee you, y'all would not like it because I'm not going to have these people. How much time do you need uh, to search for a file? Then, folks, if you continue this, then you'll be working a half day on Sundays, too. So y'all need to put your heads together uh, and, and, and work this out, else uh, you'll be working a quarter into my schedule, and I can guarantee you neither side will like it. We'll be in 10-minute recess, and hopefully we can solve this problem. Let me see it. Okay, uh, let's bring the jury in. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Did you heed all of my previous admonitions while you are away for the evening? Okay, thank you very much. State may call the next witness. Thank you very much. Good morning. The state will call Cameron Campina. Raise your right hand. Sound like swear or affirm? No. Cameron Campana, C A M E R O N, Campana, C A M P A N A. May I inquire, sir? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you would again, please introduce yourself to the jury and state uh, your name. Cameron Campana. Mr. Uh, Campana, how old are you? Uh, 23 years old. Uh, do you currently live in the state of Florida? Uh, no, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm sorry? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Uh, at some point, did you live in Florida? Yes, I attended college uh, in Orlando. When did you attend college here in Orlando? August 2007 to February 2009 at Full Sail University. Uh, can you tell the jury what Full Sail University is? It's a media arts school. I attended for a recording production of music and music business. Is that a, a two-year school or a four-year school? It's an accelerated uh, pace. Uh, it's one-year programs uh, and for your associates and a 10-month program for your bachelors. Mr. Campana, can I ask you to maybe speak up just a little bit? Okay. Thank you. Uh, how many years did you attend Full Sail? Um, 2007 to 2009, um, about almost three years. Uh, did you graduate from Full Sail? Yes, I graduated. And what type of degree do you get from Full Sail? Uh, bachelor's of Science in Music Business. Uh, what are you currently doing for a living? I'm a club promoter for an entertainment company in Cleveland. Is that in line with the education that you received? Yes. Right. Back when you attended Full Sail, uh, starting in August of 2007, where did you live? Uh, Sutton Place Apartments. Do you know the address there? Uh, 3834, um, 
I forget which apartment number. Okay. Uh, when you lived there, with whom did you live? What was the, Who did you live with? Uh, Anthony Lazaro. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the apartment. What, how big was the apartment? It was a two-bedroom, two-bathroom uh, apartment. Um, I want to say it was about maybe 1,000 square feet altogether. And when you first moved in, you, you lived with Tony Lazaro? Yes. At some point, did you have other roommates? Yes. Uh, Roy House um, stayed with us briefly, and then uh, Nathan Lesnovich. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Mr. House first. When did Mr. House first start living in your apartment? I believe it was November of 2007. And how long did he stay? Till about June 2008. Okay. Uh, you said this was a two bedroom apartment? Yes. While Mr. House was staying with you, where did he sleep? Uh, on the couch in the living room. No. Was this a couch that pulled out into a bed? No. Right. He just slept on the couch? Yeah. Mr. You also mentioned a, a Nathan Lesnowitz. Yes. When did he live with you at the Sutton Place apartment? It was uh, towards the end of May. Um, I believe around May 25th or 26th he moved in. And how long did he stay? Um, until our lease was up in August 2008. So at one point you had four men living in this apartment? Yes. What were the sleeping arrangements during this time? Where did everybody sleep? Uh, Nate took the couch, and then Roy took the floor until he found his own uh, apartment. Right. Was he looking for an apartment during this time? Yes. Right. Directing your attention to May and June in July of 2008, can you tell the jury what your school schedule was? Um, we were on a rapid schedule. I was pretty much going to school either nine to five or one to nine. It changed every month. It changed every month? Yes. Do you, do you have any specific recollection of what your hours were at school during the month of May of 2008? Um, I want to say nine to five. I know June was one to nine. Okay. So, approach. May I continue? Sir? Just oh. a second. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, sir. Mr. Campana. Going back to June of two thousand and eight, you believe your work, your school schedule was one to nine. Yes. Uh, did your classes or your education also entail you uh, working in any way? Oh, uh, no. So after you worked from, after you went to classes from one to nine, you were done? Yes. Do you recall Mr. Lesnowitz's school schedule during June of 2008? Um, I believe it was nine to five. I'm not 100% sure though. Did you take classes with him during this time? Uh, we were on different uh, schedules in different months because I had taken time off and uh, had to retake classes. Okay. How about Mr. Lazaro? Um, we started at the same time, and he never had to retake classes or anything, so he got ahead of me. But we were on uh, different schedules this same month, usually. Sir, did there, directing your attention to the end of May, beginning of June of 2008, did you have the occasion to meet Casey Anthony? Yes. Uh, can you tell the jury the circumstances by which you came to meet her? Excuse Wait, how you met her? Um, I met her through uh, my roommate Anthony Lazaro after um, a party, for, a birthday party for a friend, Daniel Howard. Do you remember when that party was? I believe it was May twenty fourth, or around that date. That's when his birthday was. And Mr. Howard is a friend of your what is or was a friend of yours? Yes, he was a mutual friend with uh, all of us. When you first met Ms. Anthony, can you tell the jury how she appeared, what her demeanor was? Um, she was, you know, just a regular 22-year-old girl, you know, happy. Um, um, just seemed like, you know, normal and uh, just your average 22-year-old. Okay. Nothing out of the ordinary? Yeah. No. Subsequent to that birthday party, did you have the occasion to see... Uh, Casey Anthony again uh, after yes okay. can you tell the jury 
the period after that birthday party strike that let's go to this let's go to this question at some point did Ms. Anthony start staying with you on a regular basis um yes okay. do you recall when that was uh, I want to say the middle of June of 2008 or towards the end of June yeah okay. it was June 2008 I know Prior to that period of time when this, when the defendant was more or less staying with you, uh, how many times do you believe you may have seen Ms. Anthony on a social basis? On social basis? Yes. Yeah. Um, inside the apartment or outside? Let's do both. I would see her daily once she starts staying with us inside the apartment. Okay. Outside of the apartment, maybe two or three times. The two or three times that you saw the defendant, have you? Did, were you aware that she had a daughter? Yes. Had you ever, do you know the daughter's name? Kaylee. Okay. How many times have you met Kaylee? Um, about four times, maybe three. When you saw Kaylee, Anthony, where would, where would you see her? Um, either in Anthony Lazaro's room with Casey or in the living room watching TV. During this time period that you saw Kaylee Anthony at your apartment uh, with the defendant, did they, meaning Ms. Anthony and Kaylee, ever spend the night? Um, not together. I'm sorry, what do you mean not together? Did they um, or did they not spend the night? Uh, Casey did. Not Kaylee never spent the night at the apartment. All right, so Kaylee never spent the night over at your apartment? No. When you first met Ms. Anthony, were you ever, did you ever have any discussions with her about her employment? Um, she had mentioned to us that uh, she had worked for Universal as an event coordinator. Was that your understanding that that was her, that was her job or she used to work there? That's what I was under, I understood that that was her job. All right. Did she talk about her job? Um, every now and then, just brief little things. Um, I don't know specifics, but um, she had mentioned like um, picking up tickets for a Batman premiere uh, for The Dark Knight and uh, just like other little things saying work is stressing me out and such like that. The work was stressing her out? Yeah. You mentioned something about a, a Batman premiere? Yes. What did Ms. Anthony say about that? She had told uh, my roommate Anthony Lazar that she was going to get red carpet tickets for the premiere and um, she, it never uh, happened. Statement of the defendant, Your Honor. It goes to her state of mind. A little? referring to the statement So are you talking about what the defendant told you of Mr. Lazaro? About the uh, Batman tickets? Yes. I've heard of that. No, you, no. you heard that from whom? From Anthony Lazaro. Okay. If that was for Mr. Lazaro, objection sustained. Yes, sir. You had mentioned a few minutes ago uh, that at one point uh, Ms. Anthony started staying with you on a regular basis. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and again, when, when would that have been? Sustained as to the last question. Did Ms. Anthony begin staying with you in your apartment? Yes. When was that? Um, some point towards the end of June, mid-June to end June. Was this something that you had talked to Mr. Lazaro about, that uh, she was going to be moving in? No. Was this something that you had spoken to the defendant about? Uh, no. Over a when she started staying at your apartment, was there any understanding that you're aware of about how long she was going to stay? Um, no, she had told us that she was looking for an apartment with, uh, I believe it was Amy. Had you ever met Amy? Uh, I believe once. Okay. But when she first started staying there, did you know who Amy was? Uh, no. Now, you worked I'm sorry, you went to school this time from the periods of one to nine in June, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. 
during the time that you were with the defendant, did you ever see her getting ready to go to work? No. When you, well, tell us about when you, uh, you never, I'm sorry, when she started living with you, did you ever see Kaylee again? Um, I believe once, and I, I can't be 100% positive about that. Did she ever tell you during the subsequent weeks where Kaylee was? Um, we have asked, and uh, one time she said that she was going to Universal with the nanny. Then another time was the nanny was taking her to Cocoa Beach for a friend's uh, son's birthday party. Did the defendant ever appear anxious about seeing her daughter? Um, sometimes. Um, she would say that she talked to Kaylee on the phone and that she was excited. Um, other than that, I don't think so. During the time frames that she was living with, with you and your roommates, did you ever hear her on the phone purportedly talking to her daughter? No. Did you ever hear her talking to, purportedly to the nanny? No. Did she talk on the phone while you were, while she lived with you? She would, um, but she would always step outside and uh, have a conversation. Could you see her walking around outside? I would see her walk around the little pond in the back. There's a pond in the back of yeah, the apartment? Yeah, um, behind the apartment. Uh, if, if you were standing on our balcony, you could see it from there. Right. Uh, and then she would she come back to the apartment? Yes. When she came back to the apartment, would she relate to you with whom she was speaking? Um, one time. She, she says she was speaking to her mother. And... Um, that I asked her why she always goes outside, and she said uh, that was because it's her time to vent. It was what? It was her time to vent. Okay. Did she ever tell you uh, what those arguments or what those discussions were about? Uh, no. While Ms. Anthony was living with you, uh, how were you guys let? Who was doing the cooking? Um, I mean, everyone would do their part. But um, once she started staying on a regular basis, she started cooking dinner and buying groceries. Uh, would she ask you? Would she ever ask you if anybody needed anything at the store? Yes. Uh, and would she return with those items? Yes. Uh, did she ever do laundry? Uh, yes. Uh, whose laundry did she do? Uh, mostly hers. Relevancy. Your Honor, it's relevant to her state of mind and, and her conduct during this time period. May we approach? Overall, at this point. Thank you, sir. You can continue. It was mostly her laundry, sometimes uh, Anthony's, Lazaro's, and um, I believe one time she even uh, did mine. Did you ask her to? No. What about cleaning the apartment? Who cleaned the apartment? Uh, she helped clean. We all helped uh, keep it. Overall, we'd all take part in cleaning, but she would uh, help clean more often. As part of your uh, studies at Full Sail, were you? Did you have a computer? Yes. Uh, what type of computer did you have? Apple MacBook Pro. Was that given to you by the school? Yeah, it was a. Uh, a uh, uh, package deal that we could get with uh, classes. To your knowledge, did your roommates also have computers? Yes, we all had uh, Apple MacBook Pros. Did you ever see the defendant with a computer? Yes. What type of computer did she have? I'm not sure the brand, but it was a PC laptop. Uh, while she was living with you, did you see her using that laptop? Yes. Uh, did you ever use her laptop? No. To your knowledge, did she ever ask to borrow your computer? No. To your knowledge, did she ever ask to borrow anybody else's? No. Uh, so during this time period that the defendant was living with you, can you describe to the jury what her general demeanor was? She just seemed just the same. Nothing had changed. Um, 
you know, she was happy. She seemed, uh, you know, excited about life. Just. Did you ever socialize with the defendant outside of the apartment? Um, I believe that that one or two times. Where would that have been? Excuse me? Where would that have been? Um, once at uh, one of my friend's apartments that her and Tony stopped by at. And um, I can't be positive about the second time. Okay. Have you ever heard of the, uh, the Fusion Ultra Lounge? Yes. And what is that? It's uh, It was a restaurant slash uh, club lounge that served food and um, had nightlife at night. I'm sorry? It, they would have uh, nightlife uh, events at night. Uh, to your knowledge, have you ever spent any time with the defendant at that particular club? No. Texas has Oluru. 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 All right. Did, during this time period, did you drink alcohol? Yes. Uh, while you were at the apartment, did the defendant ever drink with you? No. Right. How about outside of the apartment? I've seen her. I never saw her, but she would come home sometimes and would um, be uh, drunk. I think it was just like one time I saw her come back. Okay. Have you ever been to the uh, – have you ever met George or Cindy Anthony? No. Had you ever been over to George or Cindy Anthony's home? No. While she was living with you, did you ever see any article of clothing that belonged to Kaylee? Only stuff that she would bring over if she brought her over in the morning, like a swimsuit because we had a pool. And that's um, when you actually saw Kaylee, correct? Yes. All right. How about after she started living with you, did you ever see any article of clothing belonging to Kaylee? Not that I saw. Any toys? Um, maybe a book. I think there was a book, a Pink Panther video, too. This was while she was living with you? Um, I believe so. All right. Any stuffed animals? No. During the time period that she was living with you, did she ever tell you that her daughter was missing? No. Did she ever tell you that her daughter had been kidnapped? No. Did she ever tell you that while you were out in classes, she was out looking for her daughter? No. Did she at any time ever ask you for any help in trying to find her daughter? No. Are you aware of an incident, without going into any detail, are you aware of an incident uh, on... July 15th when the defendant's mother came to your apartment? I had class until 9. I got home and Anthony and Nathan had told me what had happened. Okay. Were you... Somebody else told you. Right. Uh, well, I came home. And... You were not uh, home when any of that may have happened? Excuse me? You were not at home when any of that no, may have happened? I wasn't home. Uh, did you have the occasion to meet Lee Anthony later on that night? Yes. And when, had you ever met him before? No. And when he came over, uh, did you say anything to him? Um, I just told him I was sorry to hear about what happened, and if there's anything that we can do, uh, we'll help. Did, what can you tell the jury about Lee's demeanor when you saw him that night? He seemed calm, um, but at the same time, he was worried. Did you give him any items that belonged to the defendant that night? Um, he came and picked up a bag of clothes that Casey had at, uh, in Anthony's room. Uh, did you actually witness him take that, those items or that bag out of the apartment? Yes. Did you have any other contact with the defendant after that night? No. Did you have any other contact with Lee Anthony after that night? No. I have one second, Judge. Thank you very much, sir. I have no further questions. Thank you, Judge.
Cross examination. Mr. George. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Campina? Campiano. Campana. Were you in Casey's home on June 16, 2008, when Kaylee drowned? No. No further questions. Folks, was, was your microphone on, Mr. George? I, I cannot hear you, sir, so it's not on the record. You can cut your microphones off, but as I told you all in the back, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry, sir. And the court reporter cannot hear you. It's a, the question assuming was assuming facts not in evidence. We'd ask that the question be struck. Over. I have no further May the witness stand down. Yes. Thank you, sir. State may call the next witness. Thank you, State. We call the other witnesses. Can you please raise your right hand and turn off? My name is Nathan Lesnovich, N-A-T-H-A-N-L-E-Z-N-I-E-W-I-C-Z. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Morning. How are you? Not too bad. All right. Am I pronouncing your name correctly as Lesnowitz? Lesnovich. Lesnovich. Sorry about that. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, where do you uh, do you currently live in Florida? Yes, sir. Okay. Where do you live? I live in Fort Pierce. Uh, how long have you lived there? Um, I grew up there, and I moved back about a year and a half, two years ago. Was there a time period where you lived in Orlando? Yes, sir. When did you live here in Orlando? Um, 2007 to 2009. Why? I was going to school at Full Sail University. All right. Uh, we heard a little bit about Full Sail, but what were you doing at Full Sail? I was going to school for audio engineering. For audio engineering? Yep. How long did you attend Full Sail? For a year and a half. While you were at Full Sail, did you uh, obtain any type of degree? No, sir. And can you tell the jury what you're doing now? Um, I currently play in a band called Kaya Vibe out of Vero Beach. I play in a band. I'm a musician. Kaya Vibe. What do you want? I play keyboard and percussion. Did you also play in bands or while you attended Full Sail? Yes, sir. While you were attending Full Sail, uh, where did you live? I lived at Sutton Place with Tony and Cameron. Okay. Uh, Tony, what's his last name? Lazaro and, and Cameron Campana. Okay. When did you first start living with uh, Mr. Lazaro? Um, the end of May in 2008, to, I believe, 2008. All right. When you moved in with uh, with Mr. Lazaro, where did you sleep? I slept on the couch. Okay. How long were you planning on staying? Um, about a month and a half until their lease end. Until their lease ended, my original lease had ended, and then Tony and me and another gentleman were going to move into another apartment, starting when Tony's lease ended there at Sutton Place. So you were just kind of buying time until... Yeah, you're, until you're right, until Tony's lease was up. All right. Did you attend classes with Mr. Lazaro? Yes, I did. Uh, during this time period? Not during this time period, no. During the time period of, let's go with uh, the end of May, June, and July of 2008, do you recall what your school schedule was? Um, I believe my school schedule for the month of June was 9 to 5. Did you work outside of going to school? Um, I, I was a musician. I traveled uh, with my band playing. Did you have um, performances to give during this time period? Yes, sir. Uh, did you perform locally or did you leave town? Um, all over the place. I'd leave town a lot. All right. Did 
did there come a time during this time period, May, June 2008, where you met Casey Anthony? Yes, sir. Uh, how did you first meet Ms. Anthony? Um, the drummer for my band, uh, Daniel Howard, he was uh, having a birthday party um, on, I believe it was May 24th, um, and that's where Tony and Casey first met, and that's where I also met Casey. What can you tell the jury about your first impressions or how the defendant was acting when you first met her? Um, seemed like just, you know, like a normal 21, 22 year old girl. I mean, she seemed fine. She was outgoing. She was talkative. Okay. Uh, how did she and Tony appear to get along? They seemed to get along great. Were you aware at that first meeting that the defendant had a daughter? No, not at first. No, sir. When did you first become aware that the defendant had a daughter? Um, it had to be very shortly thereafter, probably in the next week or two to follow. Probably the next few days, actually. Did you ever meet her daughter? Yes, I did. What's, what was her name? Her name is Kaylee. All right. Where did you meet Kaylee? Um, at my apartment. Okay. How many times in all do you think you, you've seen Kaylee Anthony? Uh, two to three times. During this time period, when you first met the defendant and she came over to your apartment with her daughter, did she ever spend the night? Did Casey ever spend the night or did Kaylee ever spend the night? Both together. No, sir. No. Did there come a time where the defendant started spending more time at your apartment? Yes, sir. Did there come a time when she basically stayed every day? Yes, sir. When was that? Um, approximately the third and fourth week of June was when her um, staying over picked up quite a bit. When you, I take it you've had conversations with the defendant while she stayed with you? Yes, sir. Times. Uh, did she ever tell you anything about her employment? Um, she said that she was employed at Universal Studios. Did she tell you what she did at Universal Studios? Um, event coordination. Event planning, event coordination. Did you ever see any IDs, uh, like a, an ID badge or anything that would tell you that she worked at Universal? No, sir. Uh, did she ever talk about her work? Um, every once in a while. Okay. What, did, what would she tell you about her work? Um, the only thing that uh, really that we had ever talked about was the uh, a Batman premiere that was coming up when Batman first came out. What about a Batman premiere? Um, that the Universal was doing a premiere and that she could get some tickets for some of the other guys um, in the apartment there that were interested in going. Okay. Were you interested in going? Um, if there was a ticket available, <laughs> there we go. Was there a ticket available? Um, Relevancy? Your Honor, it goes to the defendant's state Sustain. of mind. Sustain. Other than that, would she ever complain about her work? No, sir. I believe you said that during this time period you were going to classes from 9 to 5. Yes, sir. Uh, while you were getting ready to go to school, did you ever observe the defendant getting ready to go to work? Um, I mean, she'd get ready. I mean, she would leave when we would leave in the morning. Um, I just naturally assumed that the, that was where she was heading was to work. Okay. And would you come right or usually come straight home from your classes back to the apartment? It all depends. Uh, to your knowledge, did the defendant have a key to that apartment? No, sir. Were there times that you would come home from class or after your day uh, that the defendant was there? And the defendant was there? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. uh, did you spend time alone with her while her boyfriend was yes, out sir. of school or whatever? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, what did you guys do? Hang out, watch TV. I mean, you know, it's with full sale with the way the schedule works. Everyone's in transition all the time. People are constantly coming and going. You're home for a few hours to, to maybe eat, get a couple hours sleep or watch TV, and then you're right back at lab or back in class again for the afternoon or evening. Uh, was, the, was the defendant easy to talk to? Yes, sir. Was she? What, how would you describe this time period while she was living with you, uh, her demeanor? Um, seemed normal. Um, 
you know, happy, like, you know, every, everything was fine. I didn't notice any, you know, nothing caught my eye as far as their personality or mood swings or anything like that. Now, you, you had testified a few minutes ago that you had seen Kaylee Anthony approximately two to three times. Yes, sir. Uh, when she started living or staying for extended periods of time at your apartment, did you ever see Kaylee? No, sir. Did that ever seem odd to you? Um, it did. Uh, I didn't, honestly, I didn't pay too much attention to it. Uh, Cam and I had a, Cameron, Cam Hannah and I had a conversation about it, I think once or twice, you know, like that just that we hadn't seen Kaylee around in a couple of weeks. Did you ever ask the defendant where Kaylee was? Yes, sir, I did. What did she tell you? Um, that she was at, at, at that time that she was at Disney World with the nanny and that they were going to Coco to the beach the following day. Uh, were you ever told any other places where Kaylee was? Um, just typically that she was with the nanny and they were out doing various things. I mean, it was summertime. I, you know, didn't really raise a, a flag to anyone. It seemed like a typical, you know, typical summertime things was, to do. Was there anything about the defendant's demeanor when she told you where Kaylee was that made you worried? No, sir. Uh, that made you question what she was telling you? No, sir. <clears throat> While the defendant was living with you, did she ever tell you anything about her her parents? Not much, sir, no. You say not much. What do you recall her saying? Um, when uh, her and her mother would have phone conversations, she would leave the apartment to have those conversations because she said every, you know, from time to time that they would get into arguments on the phone and she didn't want us to have to listen to them argue on the phone. Did you ever hear an argument that the defendant had with anybody on the phone? No, sir. Did you ever hear her speaking purportedly to her daughter on the phone? No, sir. Uh, did you ever hear her speaking purportedly to the nanny on the phone? No, sir. Now, outside of... I'm not sure that. Were you aware during this time period that... Uh, did the defendant have an automobile? Excuse me? Did you have a car? Yes, sir. What kind of car did she have? Uh, it was a little white car. I'm not sure exactly what kind of car it was. During this time period, did you ever ride in that car? No, sir. Did you ever get near the car? No, sir. Did she? Did the defendant ever tell you that she was having any car trouble during this time period? Um, just one day uh, when she had broken down um, around the corner at the Am Scott and Tony had left in the morning to go pick her up. That was the only time that I recall. Were you home when the defendant called regarding that? Yes, sir. Uh, did you see Tony leave to go get her? Yes, sir. Uh, were you at home when they came back to your apartment? Yes, sir. Uh, how long was Tony gone, approximately? Mm, maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most. When do you, do you have any recollection of them coming home with anything? Um, no, sir. I don't remember exactly if she came home with anything or not. So what? type of things would the defendant do while in the apartment? Did she cook? Yes, sir. Uh, did she clean? Yes. Uh, the Overall. Salon. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry? Yes, sir. Uh, did she ever do your laundry? Did she ever do my laundry? No, sir. Outside of the apartment, uh, <coughs> did you socialize with the defendant? Yes, sir. Where, where would that be? Um, Fusion nightclub, mostly on Friday evenings. Uh, what is Fusion Nightclub? Uh, it's a restaurant bar uh, on the uh, eastern side of Orlando. They're closer to UCF. Were there any particular things going on on Friday nights there? Um, Tony and Roy House um, and a couple of their friends had a, a production company, you know, where they, an event type company where they go around to various bars and clubs and promote events and just try to get people in the door and everything. Uh, so Friday nights they were working at Fusion. How many times do you believe that you've been at fusion with the defendant? Two or three times, maybe. Uh, can we um, bring up the answer? Maybe 
objection to what? Well, it's not being published to the jury. Are you objecting to the picture? Okay, let's let him look at the picture. I haven't seen it yet, and it's not published to the jury, so let's wait. Yes, sir. All right. Um, yeah. I can't see it. It doesn't come to your monitor, sir. The judge says that. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm showing you what's been marked uh, for identification uh, BS. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, sir. What is that a picture of? Uh, that is a picture of myself and Casey Anthony. Okay. Do you recall uh, on what date that photograph was taken? I don't recall the exact date, no, sir. Okay. Uh, was there ever a time when you were at Fusion with the defendant that she participated in a contest? Yes, sir. What type of contest was that? Um, it was a uh, hot body contest. Okay. Objection sustained unless you can put it in the date. Well, that's what I was trying to work on, Judge. Well, you need to work on it. <laughs> Thank you. Because he just said he doesn't remember dates, so... The the dress that the defendant is wearing, can you see it in that picture? Yes, sir. Uh, does that in any way help you determine on what date that picture might have been was taken? No, sir. Okay. I'd been there a couple times up there, and I don't know exactly which date this was or which Friday this was. Okay. Do you know where that photograph was taken? Yes, sir. Where was that photograph taken? At Fusion. Was this during the month of June of 2008? Was not relevant. As to that question overall. You didn't ask for a sidebar. Not at this point. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, was this picture taken, taken in June of 2008? Yes, sir. And does that picture appear to be a, a true and accurate representation of what you look like and what the defendant looked like in June of 2008? Yes, sir. And at this time, the state would move what's been marked for identification BS uh, into evidence as states number three, I believe. Mr. Bias. Okay. Okay. You can approach. <laughs> You may proceed. Objection overruled. Thank you, Judge. Um, again, at this time, the state would move what's been previously marked uh, for identification uh, BS into evidence in states number three. It would be entered as evidence of a defense objection as states numbered. Thank you. At this time, Your Honor, may I publish that paper? Yeah, you have a standing objection, Your Honor, on all these issues. So Okay. Based upon prior motions, you have a standing objection to this line of photographs. You may publish to the jury. Thank you. During the times that you were with the defendant at Fusion, uh, how would you describe her demeanor to the jury? Um, she always seemed like she was having a good time. I mean, she's not an introvert by any means. I mean, she's outgoing personality, and she liked to go out and have a good time. At any time that she was living in your apartment, did you ever see her distraught? Ever see her what? She distraught. Did. No, sir. Depressed. No, sir. Scared. No, sir. Angry. No, sir. Worried. No, sir. At any time that you knew 
Casey Anthony, while she was living with you, did she ever tell you that her daughter was missing? No, sir. That her daughter had been kidnapped? No, sir. That she, while you were out at school, uh, she was out looking for her? No, sir. Did she ever ask you for help in trying to find her? No, sir. Were you present uh, at your apartment on July 15th of 2008? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell the jury what you and your roommates were doing in the early evening hours of that night? Um, the only ones home were me and Anthony Lazaro, and uh, we were playing video games, uh, sitting on the couch waiting for the All-Star game to start that evening. Was Who else was home? Just It was just me and Tony, and Casey Anthony was there. What was the defendant doing while you guys were playing the video games? I don't exactly remember. Uh, she was just, you know, just kind of hanging out here and there, bouncing around. I don't know if she was doing laundry at the time or not, but, you know, she was just there hanging out. Uh, again, at this, at, during this time period, was there anything about the defendant's demeanor that gave you any concern whatsoever? No, sir. Uh, at some point, did, was there a knock on the door? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jury what happened when there was a knock on the door? Um, I, when there was first a knock at the door, uh, J.C. Anthony um, answered the door, and there was a blonde girl there that I did not recognize. Um, at that point, K.C. proceeded to step outside the apartment and close the door um, for a couple minutes. Um, she returned back to the apartment coming in, followed by, now I know to be her mother, Cindy Anthony, and also with Amy Heisinga. Without going into any specifics about what was said, did you see the defendant come back into the apartment after she left with the blonde girl? Yes. Okay. What happened when she came back in with the blonde girl? Um, she came back in, and her and Cindy Anthony were in an argument, and Cindy Anthony had asked her to grab her things and to let's go to which um, Casey Anthony had replied that she'll go outside and speak with her, but that she wasn't leaving. <clears throat> Did she go outside? Yes, sir. Did she come back? No, sir. After she left with her mother, did you ever see in person Casey Anthony again? No, sir. Did you ever speak with her on the phone again? No, sir. Uh, at some point, did you meet her brother, Lee? Yes, sir. Well, tell me how you were feeling when this happened. I mean, just um, taking out, what, what, was your, what, were, what was your thought process? We were just kind of a little confused at the time. We didn't know what was going on. We just figured, you know, it was something between her and her mother and her roommate and just left it at that for the time being. Okay. Uh, were you worried about anything? No, sir. Right. At some point, did you meet Lee Anthony? Yes, sir. Tell the jury approximately how long, I know you weren't looking at a watch, but approximately how long after the defendant had left that you met her brother? Um, maybe, if I remember correctly, it was early evening when Casey left. It was probably mid to later evening. I'd say somewhere between 9 and midnight when Lee Anthony came by. Okay. What can you tell the jury about his overall demeanor? What was his state? Um, Leek at that point had kind of felt bad for us a little bit. Um, he said his sister was known to get into trouble here and there and that he wished that he had met us prior um, so that he could warn us to. What's the objection? Sustain. Don't want you to talk about what anybody other than you said. Okay. All right. uh, just asking a general demeanor. Was he, uh, was he nice to you? Yes, he was, sir. Right. Did he appear angry? No, sir. Uh, did he appear uh, worried? Yes, sir. While he was at the apartment, did you give him anything? Um, he gathered a few of J.C. Anthony's belongings. Um, what exactly, I don't know. If I remember correctly, Tony was the one who um, helped him gather up some of her belongings. During this night, did you were you also visited by law enforcement? Yes, sir. Uh, how many times? Twice. The first time law enforcement came, was that before Lee Anthony came over or after Lee Anthony came before over? Lee, before Lee came over. When the deputy came over, was anything, to your knowledge, given to him? Yes, sir. What was given to him? A cell phone. Did you give that to law enforcement or did Tony give it to him? Anthony Lazaro gave that. Anthony Tony Lazaro. Lazaro gave that to right. law enforcement. 
did at that time did law enforcement question you about anything? No, sir. Uh, how long was law enforcement there that first time? Five minutes, just long enough to collect the cell phone and and to fill out a receipt form or some sort for it. Okay. Uh, and then Lee came over. Yes, sir. Uh, at a subsequent time, did law, I believe you testified law enforcement came back? Yes, sir. How long after Lee had left did law enforcement come back? I can't say exactly. Maybe an hour or two. Uh, by this time, were you aware, or were you made aware that? no one had seen Kaylee for an extended period of time. Yes, sir. Uh, when the police came to your apartment the second time, uh, what did they do while they were there? Um, they searched the apartment. Did you have any problem with them searching the apartment? No, sir. Uh, how long were they there all in all? Maybe 20, 25 minutes. Did they take items with them? I do not recall, sir. While the defendant was staying with you on a daily basis in June and into July of 2008, did you ever see any article of clothing belonging to Kaylee Anthony? No, sir. Did you ever see any toys belonging to Kaylee Anthony? No, sir. Uh, any stuffed animals belonging to Kaylee Anthony? Not that I recall, sir, no. Thank you. I have no further questions of the witness, Judge. Thank you. Approximate length of your cross-examination. That's why I'm asking you approximate length. Five minutes, okay? You may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I don't want to butcher your last name. Can you repeat that? For yes, me? it's Lesnovich. Lesnovich? Lesnovich. Lesnovich. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. Uh, Mr. Lesnovich, you saw Kaylee how many times? Um, two to three times, approximately. Okay. Did she appear hungry to you at any time? No, sir. Did she look well fed? Yes, sir. Well taken care of? Yes, sir. Was Casey attentive to her? Yes, sir. And did Casey. Did you ever see Casey strike her or yell at her or treat no, sir. her improperly? No, sir. And in fact, in your opinion, she was a good mother from what you, what you saw? I'll rephrase, Judge. Uh, I'll rephrase. Okay, rephrase it. Now, subsequent to where you are today, it's turned, you found out, of course, that during that time that Casey was living with you, that Kaylee was no longer with us, correct? Yes, sir. Now, looking back at Casey's behavior, there was absolutely no indication to you that Casey gave you that Kaylee was dead. No, sir. And there was no signs in any way, shape, or form as far as you and the outside world could see. Or no, as far sir. as you could see, I should say. No, sir. Now, the Casey's car, where did she park the car when she lived with you? Um, in the parking lot. Right next to your car? Um, well, I mean, it's ran I mean, it's random as far as parking spaces go and who gets one. But typically, we were, we were all within a few parking spaces of each other, yes, sir. Okay. And she didn't park 50 yards away? No, sir. Where no other cars were parked? No, sir. Okay. Um, I have no further questions, Judge. Any other questions of this witness, Mr. George? Okay. Sorry, Mr. George. Sir, were you present? on June 16, 2008, at Casey Anthony's home when Kaylee drowned in the pool? No, sir. No further questions. Okay, any other questions of this witness? Not at this time. Okay, sir, you may stand down. <clears throat> okay, members of the jury, we're gonna take our mid-morning recess at.
take it a few of you need to go outside. I guess this is the time you need to go outside. The special recess. For those who know what I'm talking about. Okay. We'll take a 15-minute recess until you finish. Okay, state recognized presence of jury yes, sir. and the defense. And members of the jury, did you heed my previous admonitions? Okay. Both? Just a second. Go ahead. Uh, Roy House, R-O-Y-H-O-U-S-E. I go by Clint, C-L-I-N-T. Oh, both sides, a rule of procedure has been invoked. Both sides will be responsible for advising uh, their witnesses as to the rule. And uh, the rule is expanded to include being able to look at electronic devices and listen to folks' testimony. So make sure you incorporate those things, too. Yes, sir. Mr. George, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, you are Clint House? Yes, sir. Mr. House, how old are you? 25. Do you currently live in Florida? Yes, I do. Where do you live in Florida? Jacksonville, Florida. Said Jacksonville? Jacksonville, yes, sir. Was there a time that you lived in Orlando? Yes, sir. Uh, when did you live in Orlando? From 2007 to 2009. Why were you in Orlando? Just going to school at Full Sail. Okay. We've heard a little bit about Full Sail already, but can you tell the jury what you were studying there? I was there for recording arts, learning how to engineer and produce music. How long... All in all, how long were you at full, ha at full sale? About 10 months. Did you achieve a degree? No, I did not. Are you employed now, sir? Yes, I am. What do you do? Work for my parents' company, First Coast Kim Dry in Jacksonville. What kind of, what kind of company is that? It's a carpet cleaning company. When you were attending full sale, um, where did you live? I lived with Tony and uh, Cam. Is that at the uh, Sutton Place apartment? At the Sutton Place apartment, yes, sir. Uh, from what time periods did you live there in 2008? I was only there for a few months. I moved in in at the end of April and was out at the beginning or at the end of June. Of 2008? Of 2008, yes, sir. During that time period, where did you sleep? Sometimes on the couch, sometimes on the floor. We were all in a transition period waiting for Tony's lease to run out because me, Nate, and Tony were going to get a place together. During May, June, and July of 2008, you were attending Full Sail, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall during that time period what hours that you were in school? It ranged. There were some times that I'd be in school at 1 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there was times that I'd get there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and be there at five, until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the, the hours range just based on different um, classes. During the time period of May, June of 2008, did you meet uh, a woman by the name of Casey Anthony? Yes, I did. Do you recall when you first met her? Yes, uh, me and Tony met her at a party that one of our friends was throwing. Do you remember the friend's name? No, I do not. All right. Do you know whether or not that was the first time that your roommate Tony actually met Casey Anthony? Yes, it is. So you met them, you met her the same, same day? The same night, yes, sir. All right. What do you recall about meeting Ms. Anthony on that date? She seemed like a fun party girl. Somebody that would probably get, get along well with our group of friends. Did, uh, at that first meeting, were you aware that she had a child? Yes, I was. How did you become aware of that? 
uh, from Tony. He had, he had said that um, he was talking to a girl named Casey, but she had a, that she had a kid. Do you have any specific recollection of the defendant speaking about Kaylee on that first meeting? N not on that first meeting, no, sir. Did you ever meet Kaylee Anthony? Yes, I did. Where did you first meet Kaylee Anthony? At the Sutton Place Apartments. How many times in all do you think that you've seen Kaylee Anthony? Four or five times. Did Kaylee Anthony ever spend the night over at your apartment with Tony and your other roommates? No, she never, she never actually stayed over. Did there come a time when Casey Anthony started staying at your apartment more or less full time? Yes, there was. And do you recall generally when that was? Right around the beginning of June into the, the middle of June is when she started being over there every single day and spending most of her nights over there. Uh, did you mind that, that she did that? No, not at all. Was this a big apartment to your mind? No, it wasn't a very big apartment at all. We were all kind of crammed in there. Overall. Previous objection would be noted. Now, while she was staying with you and your roommates, uh, did Casey Anthony ever tell you anything about her employment? Yes, she told us that she worked at Universal Studios. Did you ever see any ID cards or anything that would reflect that she actually did work there? Never saw any credentials. Did she ever tell you about her work? No. Did you ever complain about work? No. Did you ever see her getting ready to go to work? I would see her appear like she was getting ready to leave the apartment and she would say that she was going to work. So, yes. Then would you subsequently see her later on that evening? She'd come back. Okay. But when she came back, did she tell you about her day at work? She was pretty silent about it. She didn't really, like I said, she didn't really talk about her work all that much. Now, you had testified that when you first met Casey Anthony, you had seen Kaylee two, three, or four times, somewhere around there, correct? Yes. Uh, when she started staying with you full-time, did you ever see Kaylee Anthony? No, that was that was when she started staying over at the apartment on a regular basis was when we we stopped seeing Kaylee. Did you ever ask her where Kaylee was? Yes, we did. What did not we, you, did yes. you ever ask her? Yes, I did. All right. What did she tell you? She said that she was with the nanny. Okay. Did the nanny have a name? She never really said the name. She never said the name to us. She just said she just referred to her as the nanny. Did she indicate that the nanny was local? Yes. Did she ever indicate to you that Kaylee was anywhere other than Orlando? No. Did it ever seem odd to you that the child was always with the nanny? Yes, that's also speculation. Mr. Paul. I'm not asking him to speculate. I'm asking him. I'm asking him. Overall? Could you repeat the question, please? Did you ever find it odd that Kelly was never over at the apartment? Same objection, Judge. He's asking for his opinion. Sustain this that question. Did you ever question the defendant about where Kaylee was? We asked her, or I asked her, where, you know, I haven't seen Kaylee in a while, you know, where is she? And like I said, she said she was with the nanny. When she told you that, was there ever any uh, concern no. in her voice when she told you that? No. Did she ever appear worried about where Kaylee was? No. Did she ever seem sad that she did not see her? Her demeanor never changed. She was the same person. When you say that, you're, was her demeanor any different during this time period when Kaylee was not around than when you first met the defendant with Kaylee? No.
Did you also have a laptop? Yes, I did. And that was part of the full sale enrollment, I guess? Yeah, when we enrolled, it was wrapped up into our tuition, so we basically did pay for it, but yes, I did have a laptop. Did you ever see the defendant with a laptop? Yes, I did. What type, did she have, what type of laptop did she have? I believe it was an HP, you know, regular base model Windows uh, computer. Did you ever use her computer? No, sir. Did she, to your knowledge, ever use yours? No, not to my knowledge. Did you ever see her, the defendant, use any computer other than her own? No. While she was staying with you, did you ever, uh, were you ever present while she spoke on the phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, when she spoke on the phone, do you know who, to whom she was speaking? She would leave the apartment to take phone calls. She would walk outside, she would walk out into the porch or walk out to the front, uh, front door. And every time it was either she was on the phone with the nanny or she was on the phone with her mom. Is that what she told you when she came back? Yes. When she came back after these phone calls, did you ever notice any change in demeanor on the part of Casey Anthony? No, sir. Did she ever appear worried? No, sir. Or nervous? No, sir. Or scared? No, sir. <clears throat> Would it be fair to say that you saw Casey Anthony on a regular basis during this time? Yes. Would it be fair to say you saw her on a daily basis during this time? Yes. Uh, other than hanging out within the apartment, did you ever hang out outside of the apartment? Yes. Uh, where do you recall going with her and other people? Every I'll rule at this point. Every Friday night, uh, we had our own promotional night at Club Fusion. Um, me, Tony, were business partners. We uh, were the DJs, and she would come every Friday night. And she was trying to help us bring people out. And um, so, yes, every every Friday night we were at Fusion. And then there was a few times that you know we went out to regular or random bars in Orlando. Uh, around the UCF area or the downtown area. When you say that the defendant helped bring people out, what do you mean? She was a promoter. Uh, she would, because she was Tony's girlfriend, she would help talk to her friends, tell her friends to, to come to the club, uh, because the more people that came out, obviously, the more money we were going to make. And uh, so that's, that's what she would do for us. How, do you, how did she do that? Just by telling her friends, text messaging, Facebook, MySpace, tell them to come out and come to Fusion. Did you ever see her actually do that? Sending out text messages or emails? I never saw it with my, saw the text messages or emails, but I did see her post stuff on, on her MySpace page and her Facebook page, but none of her friends ever came. While at Fusion, you said you and Tony were business partners. This was your event, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, did the defendant participate in those events? Yes, she did. How did she, what role did, did she play? The promo girl. Uh, she was in a couple of our contests that I hosted. Um, she was in a hot body contest. Uh, she would mingle with the, with the crowd, with the, the people who were there. And... Um, Pretty much. Overall. Did she do this every, this, these events were on Friday? Yes, sir. Was this every Friday in the month of June of 2008? Yes, sir. Uh, do you know what a shot girl is? Yes. What's a shot girl? Shot girl is a girl who walks around with a tray of pre-mixed shots and sells them to uh, patrons inside of the club. Now, is this something that you as a business with Tony would coordinate? We would coordinate the girls, but we never paid. The, we didn't pay the girls. That was uh, based from the club. All right. Did the defendant have anything to do with selecting shot girls? No. Uh, did she ever have anything, to your knowledge, to do with how the shot girls dressed? She would give her her little tidbits of of um, I guess. Uh, you know, information for the girls, but most of the time I was the one who was telling the girls what they needed to wear. Okay. 
When you say that the defendant would give tidbits, what are you mm -hmm. talking about? She would say, you know, maybe the girls should wear these shorts or this skirt with this top. Um, that was that was the extent of it. While you were uh, at home with the defendant, did you ever witness her uh, looking for outfits for the girls to wear? No. Did she make suggestions to the girls in your presence while at Fusion? Yes. About what to wear? About what? To, yes, sir. Do you know a woman by the name of Maria Kish? Yes, I do. Who is she? Maria was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, I take it she's not now. No, she's not now. Okay. Uh, did she attend um, any of the nights at Fusion with you? Yes, she did. You may. Okay, you may proceed. The, sir, the, the nights that you were at uh, Fusion with the defendant, what can you tell the jury uh, about her, her overall demeanor? She was partying and having a good time. I don't believe it was. Overall? She was partying and having a good time. When you say partying, are you talking about drinking? Drinking, yes, sir. Was she dancing? Yes, sir. Uh, did she ever display any emotion to you that would indicate that she was upset about anything? No. Uh, did she appear happy? Yes. Uh, the times that you saw, or how would you characterize the, based upon what you saw, the relationship between the defendant and Tony Lazaro? I'm asking for observations, Judge. Overrule at this point. They both seemed happy with each other. Um, she would, you know, come over, cook dinner for everybody, clean up the apartment, do laundry. Uh, Tony was happy, and so was she. Did you, in that brief period of time, ever see the defendant and Tony fight? No. During this time period that she was basically living with you, did you ever notice the defendant be sad? No. Angry? No. Depressed? No. Withdrawn? No. She was still the same. Did she appear exactly the same during this time period when she was living with you than when you first met her with Kaylee? Yes. No difference? No difference. Were you at home on July 15th when the defendant's mother came over? No, I was not. I had moved out by then. All right. You were out? Mm -hmm. uh, after you had moved out, when did you move out? About two weeks before that. After you moved out, did you ever have any other contact with, with Casey Anthony? No. Did you ever speak with her again? Me and Tony had had a falling out with each other over the club fusion, and she was trying to rekindle our friendship, you know, um, trying to be the, the good girlfriend, trying to get her, her, her boyfriend's best friend back. And that was all the contact that we had. How did she attempt to do that? She would just text and say, hey, you know, you should come and hang out with, with, with me and Tony. Um, you know, we're going, you know, such and such. We're going out tonight. You know, you guys should come out, squash this beef, and, and become friends again. And um, we eventually did. Was that because of her efforts? No. Uh, this was subsequent? Yes. So again, after you had moved out and other than the, the text messages or emails that you've described for mm -hmm. us, 
Uh, did you have any other contact with Casey Anthony? No, there's no other contact. While she was living with you, uh, did she ever tell you that her daughter had been kidnapped? No. That she was missing? No. That while you were at school, she was actively looking for her? No. That she was worried about her? No. She needed help? No. Thank you. I don't have any further questions of this witness. Cross-examination. Morning, Mr. House. Good morning. You met Casey the end of May, yes. early June? End of May. Okay. What date exactly? May 21st, 22nd. How do you know that that was the date? It was one of our friend's birthdays, uh, and it was that time that we, that we met. That week. So the end of May. End of May, yes, sir. And you moved out July 1st? July 1st, okay. 2nd, one of those days. So the complete extent that you know Casey Anthony is a month and a half? Yes, sir. Okay. And in that month and a half, you saw Kaylee how many times? Four or five times. Okay. And where did you see her? At the apartment. Did she have... A backpack with her or food or anything like yeah, that? She, she would come over with a backpack that had toys in it, uh, flashcards. Um, Let me stop you there. Flashcards, what kind of flashcards? Uh, flashcards that had uh, shapes and colors on them that Casey would flash to, to show Kaylee, and you know she would say what it was. And Kaylee would, you would hear Kaylee yes. describe what mm -hmm. kind of colors they were? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You have to say yes for her. Okay. All right. Okay. And what other uh, learning tools did you see Casey teach Kaylee? Never saw any other learning tools, uh, but she would grab Cam's uh, drum set little thing, and she would always play on the drums. Um, but other than that, no other learning tools. Uh, DVDs, she did have some DVDs that she always brought over. So... In this bag, obviously, you'd see diapers, things like mm -hmm. that? Yes, sir. Okay. And other snacks in case Kaylee got hungry? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you ever see Kaylee malnourished? No. No, sir. Did you ever see Kaylee neglected in any way? No, sir. Did you ever see Casey strike Kaylee at no. any time? No. Did you ever see Kaylee teach, uh, I'm sorry, uh, treat Kaylee as if she were a burden or negative? No, not at all. Would you say she was a good mother? Yes, I would. Sustain. Yes, sir. Now, we'd ask that that uh, question and response be stricken. Request granted. Please read 4.04.5, .04 folks. Now, Thank sir. Thank you, you may proceed. Thank you, sir. I apologize, Your Honor. Uh, the entire, now those times were times you had seen her. Did you ever see them go out to the pool? No. Okay, so you weren't there on June 2nd when Kaylee and... Assuming facts not in evidence, the witness has answered he did not. Now counsel is testifying. I'll rephrase the question. Sustain, rephrase the question. Were you aware that Tony Lazaro and Casey and Kaylee went to the pool on June 2nd? Yes. Okay. And um, who else was present? Nobody. It was okay. just them. Okay. Now, you mentioned some things about the computer, that you had a computer. Yes. So yes. Okay. Casey had a computer. Yes. Everybody had a computer. Yes. Nobody designated you to monitor who else's, everybody's computer, did they? No, sir. So you, didn't, you weren't keeping any close eye on Casey's computer at any time? No, sir. Okay. And now you met at the end of May, and you moved out in July. And you described that you worked at Fusions. Yes. And Tony was, a, I guess the two of you were promoters? Yes. And part of a promoter's job is to get people to come into the club? Yes. That is the definition of a promoter. Okay. Uh, for those of us that don't know the, the promoting world, 
Uh, do you get a percentage of the door? Depends on what uh, deal you have worked out with the club. It can range from anywhere from 100% of the door to half of the door to $2 a head for everybody that walks through. What about drinks? Do you get any, any money off the alcohol? No. Okay. So it's just the door? It's just the door. It's illegal to uh, give money to a promoter off of the bar sales because it's their liquor license, not yours. And when we say the door, we're talking about what they charge you to get in. Door entrance, yes, sir. Okay. Now, you, as a promoter, contact every single person you know to let them know that on Friday night or Saturday night or whatever night that you're promoting, your company is going to be uh, promoting that club. Yes. And what you're selling is the atmosphere, right? Yes. And the atmosphere in this split specific place, it, uh, Fusion is a sushi bar. Yes. Okay, so after the sushi bar closes, it kind of turns into a, uh, like a martini bar, so to speak. Yes. Now, you were, at, you were at this time calling everyone you know, texting everyone you know, and posting on Facebook and MySpace to come to, the, to Fusions. Yes, sir. And so was Tony. Yes, sir. And because Tony was dating Casey, Casey did that too. Yes, sir. Is that, and everyone was encouraging, you would encourage all your friends to tell your friends and tell their friends, right? That's the idea, yes, sir. Okay. And, and if you're a popular guy and you know a lot of people, you can do fairly well in this business. Yes, sir. Okay. And especially you guys being college students. Yes. Now, this business with the shot girls, that is a portion of the, your theme or ambiance, right? Yes. And Casey wasn't a shot girl, was she? No, she wasn't. In fact, um, what Casey volunteered to do was to help her boyfriend, I guess, coordinate or manage these shot girls. Is that a fair assessment? Or? It's a fair assessment, uh, but it wasn't really what she was doing. Uh, she wasn't managing anybody. That was down to me and Tony. She took an interest in it. She took an interest in it, but when it comes down to it, it was us. And it was to help you in any way you can so you could be more successful. Yes. And this is while she was also staying with you, living rent-free. Yes. And she was pulling her weight uh, by doing this. Part of pulling her weight was doing this, helping you financially? Yes. Also cooking? Yes, she would cook. Cleaning the house? Yes. Throwing out the trash? No, that was us. Okay. That was the guys. So you never threw, uh, <laughs> you, do you know if Casey ever threw out the trash or you just don't know? I don't know. Okay. Um, and you mentioned even after you and uh, Tony had a falling out, she wanted to put you two back together. Yes. And you mentioned that Casey was a friendly girl. Yes, yeah, she was. She was nice. Yes, yeah, she was. She cared about people. Yes, yeah, she did. She cared about you. Is that a yes? Yes. And even though she barely knew you. Yes. And you saw her caring for her child. Yes, I did. And you have now found out that Kaylee was dead during that time period. Have you since found out, sir? Sustained. Have you since found out that Kaylee was dead during this time? Yes, I have. And you absolutely noticed no be change in her behavior? Not from, one change. Let me in finish the question, sir. You saw absolutely no change in her behavior from the moment, from the time period where she was a loving and caring mother up until the time that Kaylee was deceased and living with you. Never saw one change in her. I have no further questions. Redirect, Mr. George. No, sir. Thank you. And it would be excused. Subject to recall, I guess. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. State may call our next witness. Thank you, Judge. They will call Maria Kish.
My name is Maria Kish, K-I-S-S-H. May I inquire, sir? May I proceed? Thank you, Judge. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, Ms. Kish. Yes. Correct? Yes. All right. Ms. Kish, how old are you? I'm 26. Uh, are you still, or do you currently live in Central Florida? Yes, I do. Can you tell the jury what it is you do for a living? Um, I'm a sales manager. For a, a department store? Or a, for a retail, retail company, yes, sir. I'm sorry? A retail company, yes, sir. How long have you been doing that? Um, a little more than a year. Can you tell the jury uh, anything about your educational background? Yes, I went to the University of Florida and majored in political science. You graduated? Yes, sir. What year? 2007. Back in, I want to draw your attention back to 2008. In 2008, were you employed? Yes, I was. What were you doing in 2008? I was helping on a county campaign. You were helping out on a campaign? I was working for um, a man who was running for a county office. Was that a, a paying job or a volunteer job? It was a paying job. Did you hold that position in May and June of 2008? Yes, sir. Back then, what were your work hours, if you recall? Um, they were pretty much traditional work hours, 9 to 5, um, sometimes a little bit later. During this time period, do you recall where you lived in Orlando? Yes. What, what side of town? Um, I was living in Kissimmee at the time. Kissimmee. Mm -hmm. in, in Osceola County or Orange County? Osceola County. During this time period of, of May and uh, June of 2008, did you, or do, did you know a person by the name of uh, Clint House? Yes. Who was he at the time? We were dating at the time. When did you first start dating Mr. House? Back in May. And did you, were you dating him throughout May and June of 2008? Yes, sir. What about July? Um, yes, sir. At any time, did the two of you live together? No, we did not live together. Directing your attention uh, to June of 2008, did you meet Casey Anthony? Yes, I did. Where did you first meet Casey Anthony? I don't recall exactly. Um, I believe it was out somewhere. I get a, it wasn't you know, at somebody's apartment? A I think it, I believe it was a, like a party atmosphere. I, think. I can't recall whose house or anything. But Okay. Uh, how were you introduced to her? Um, I was introduced through Clint. Um, it was just the the girl he was seeing at the time. That's how she was introduced. That who was seeing at the time? That Tony Lazaro was seeing at the time. Had you already known Tony? Yes. Lazaro. I had, I had met him several times, yes. Did you know uh, Nathan Lesnovich? Yes. So you had, knew, you had known all these people, but Casey Anthony was a new person that you had met. Right. All right. When you met... The defendant, did you also meet her daughter on um, that, first, that first time? No, I did not. At some point, did you meet her daughter? Yes, I did. Where do you recall meeting her daughter? It was at um, Tony's apartment. What do you recall about meeting her when you first arrived? Um, I had just gone over there to um, meet up with Clint and... Um, knocked on the door and she answered the door. Who answered the door? Kaylee answered the door by herself. Yeah. Had you ever seen her before that time? No, sir. And did you ask her who she was or what was your reaction upon this little child answering the door? I knew who she was um, and I just, I just said, hi, how are you? And did you and enter the apartment? Yes, I did. When you first walked into the apartment, did you see the defendant? No, I didn't. Did you have any idea where she was? Um, I assumed she was there, and she later I saw she was just back in one of the rooms. Uh, at some point, did you see Casey? I did. Where did you see her coming from? From Tony's room. 
How much time did you spend with Kaylee on that day? Um, not very long. Maybe it was less than half an hour. Uh, did you spend or did you spend any time with Kaylee during this time period? I did. How long? Um, probably 15, maybe 15, 20 minutes. During the time frame that you spent with her, was her mother, Casey, anywhere around? Um, she had, like I said, I'd seen her come out of the room. Oh, room. I'd seen her come out of the room for um, a minute. I can't remember for what. And then she went back. Back where? Back into uh, Tony's room. Into Tony's room? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Sorry. Yes, back into Tony's room. Thank you. Now, you obviously saw your boyfriend. Yes. Uh, did you at some point leave? We did. Uh, what do you recall about getting ready to leave? Um, I had been, Clinton was doing something else, and I ended up um, sitting out on the balcony of the apartment, and Kaylee was out there as well. And Clint came and got me and said that he was ready to go, um, and I felt uncomfortable. Why? Because um, I was on the balcony with her alone, and I didn't want to leave her out there alone. Now, was this balcony, was this balcony screened? Yes, it was. All right. Uh, but did you still feel it was safe to be out there? Jack, 4-3, want to strike this entire line. No, it's relevant. Approach. You may continue, Mr. George. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Kish, we left off with uh, you and, and Kaylee uh, on the balcony. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was time for you to go? Yes. Uh, what happened after that? Um, right around that time, everyone was getting ready to leave the apartment. Clint and I were going to go get dinner, and um, Tony, Kaylee, and Casey were going to leave as well. Um, so Casey and Tony came. Overall, at this point, Casey and Tony came out, and Casey told her, told Kaylee to. Um, get her shoes on because it was time for them to leave and um, kind of that was um, about it and I saw Kaylee struggling to put on her shoes and socks um, so I helped her put on her shoes and tie her shoelaces for her um, and get her ready to leave the apartment Was, Kay was Kaylee verbal with you? Was she speaking with you? Yes, she was. Uh, you said that you were all getting ready to leave the apartment. Did you all have plans to go out to get Sustain, rephrase the question. Was the plan for all of you to go out together? No. So you and your boyfriend were going out? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Sorry, sir. Thank you. After that... Uh, visit when you saw Kaylee, did you ever see her again? No, sir. During this time period uh, in June of 2008, how often were you over at your boyfriend's apartment? Um, two to three times a week. When you went over there, uh, were those instances in which you, you stayed the night? A few times I did. A couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you were over there, do you recall a time when Casey Anthony was also over there? I do. Do you recall a time when Ms. Anthony was there all of the time? Yes, I do. How were you made aware of that? Or how did you become aware of that? That she was there all the time? Yes. Uh, I would talk to Clint, and I would just be getting off work, and... Um, he would tell me that Casey had been there all day. Um, and yes, yes. sustain. Were there times, you said you worked nine to five? Yes, sir. After work, did you, would you have the occasion to go over your boyfriend's apartment? Yes. Was the defendant there? 
Yes. Uh, when you stayed for dinner, was the defendant there? Yes, sir. How would you describe your relationship with the defendant? Would you consider yourself friends or acquaintances or, or what? Um, it was, I guess it was just, um, we saw each other several times because Tony and Clint were living together and she was over there and so I was over there. It wasn't, um, we didn't have a friendship, but it was a, just, I guess, an acquaintance. Okay. Were you polite to one another? Yes, sir. You weren't like, you didn't get into arguments with her, did you? No, never. Did you ask, did you ever tell her about your work and what you did? Um, I can't recall. Did she not. ever tell you about her work? Yes, she did. What did she tell you about her work? Um, she said she worked for Universal as an event planner. Did she ever give you any other detail other than event planner? Yes, sir. Did she ever tell you what her hours were? Mm -hmm. Not that I can remember. I'm sorry? You say yes or no? Not that I can remember, no. Did you ever see any type of identification on the defendant from Universal Studios? No, sir. Did you ever question that she actually worked at Universal Studios? No, sir. Other than the apartment, did you have the occasion to spend time with the defendant outside of the apartment? Yes. What kind of things did you do? Um, usually just involved going out at night to a bar or a club um, or just grabbing a bite to eat. You had the op Did you have the opportunity to see the defendant and Tony, to and L Tony Lozaro together? Yes. As a couple, did they, what were your observations of them as a couple? Judge, calling for an opinion. Asking for observations, Your Honor. Not an opinion. Judge, I don't believe she's a therapist of any kind to be giving opinions on. Based upon that objection, the objection will be overruled. Thank you. That means you can answer the question. What was your, what was, what did you observe about their relationship? Um, that they were, they got along well and they were casually dating um, and it just, it seemed to be um, beneficial for Tony. I'm sorry? It seemed to be beneficial for Tony. Okay. Uh, did they, did they appear to genuinely like each other? Um, I believe so. I'm sorry? I believe so, yes. But I'm sorry, Ms. Kish, I'm having a little hard time hearing you. If I could just ask you to speak up nice and loud sure. into the mic, okay? I'm sorry, I have allergies and they're acting up. The time that you spent with the defendant and Mr. Lazaro, did you ever see them argue? No. Do you know what fusion is? Yes, I do. What is fusion? It is a restaurant slash nightclub. Uh, have you had the occasion uh, to be at Fusion with your boyfriend and the defendant? Yes, sir. What type of things happened? How many times have you been at Fusion with the defendant? Um, one time. Uh, what do you, did it, tell the jury what happens at these, at these events. Is there a show? Uh, is there a concert? What is it? The time I went, with the defendant, it was. Um, the sure. Do you recall the date in which you went to fusion with the with the defendant? It was June twentieth. Okay. Uh, how do you know it was June twentieth? Because, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because I remember it was uh, it was that Friday, and um, we had all I had met up with everybody that night, and there was a um, hot body contest that night as well. And this. I, what time did you go to Fusion with your boyfriend or did you meet everybody there? I met everybody there. Uh, what do you recall about the hot body contest? Object to the relevance, Judge. Sustain as phrased. Did you witness the hot body contest? Yes, sir. 
Did the defendant participate in the hot body contest? Yes, sir. Do you recall uh, what the defendant was wearing on June 20th, 2008, during the hot body contest? Yes, she was wearing a um, just a, a thin knit dress. Do you recall the color? It was a bluish color. buttons up here. Okay. I'm showing you what's been, I believe, entered into evidence of state's number, and I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, this is number two. Number three. Do you recognize uh, the people in that photograph? I do. Uh, who are, who's in that photograph? On the left is Casey Anthony, and on the right is um, Nathan Lesnovich. Uh, do you recall Nathan being at Fusion when you were at Fusion on June 20th? Yes. 2008. Based upon that dress or that outfit that she, that Ms. Anthony appears to be wearing, uh, does that appear to be an accurate representation of what the defendant looked like and what she was wearing on June 20th of 2008? Yes, sir. Did you participate in the contest? No, sir, I did not. All right. Your Honor, for a, may I republish this to the jury one more time just for a, a brief period of time? You might. Thank you. Case okay, publishing states number three Thank in you, evidence. Sir. Do you recall the defendant having any role to play at Fusion on this night other than participating in the hot body contest? Yes, I do. Overall? What did you understand the defendant's role to be on this night? She was in charge of the shock girls. Did you see her actually interacting with the shock girls? I did. Uh, did you actually hear her talking to them about what they were supposed to do or not supposed to do? I did. Did you hear her discussing their attire or what they should wear? I can't remember. She specifically discussed that. Okay. Uh, during this time period, was there anything about the defendant's demeanor that alarmed you? No. Did she ever appear angry? No. Or upset? No, sir. I'm sorry? No, sir, she did not. Did you stay at Fusion on June 20th, 2008 until it closed? Yes. Uh, where did you stay that night? I stayed at the apartment, their apartment that night. Okay. Did you see the defendant the next morning? Yes, sir. Okay. Where do you recall seeing her? In the kitchen of the apartment. Was this in the morning or the afternoon? It was in the morning. Overrule at this point, but let's get there, Mr. George. Yes, sir. Did you have a discussion with her that morning? I did. Okay. Uh, what did you talk about? Um, I asked her where Kaylee was. And what did she tell you? She told me that she was spending the weekend at the beach with the nanny. When she said the nanny, did she give you a name? No, sir. Did she tell you anything about her financial relationship with the nanny? Yes. What did she tell you? She told me that she paid the nanny $400 a week. 
four hundred dollars a week. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you inquire? I'm talking English. Did you ask the defendant anything about Kaylee's dad? Um, I. Approach. You may proceed. Objection overruled. Thank you. Do you remember the question? I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, did you have any discussions with the defendant about Kaylee's dad? Yes, I did. What, if anything, did the defendant tell you about Kaylee's dad? She told me that he was deceased. Now, you were aware that Ms. Anthony was staying at the apartment, correct? Yes. Sustain. Did you have a discussion with the defendant about her living situation? Yes, I did. Okay. What did she tell you She what her living situation was? That she was going to move into her parents' house. They were moving out and giving the house to her. To her? To her, yes, and Kaylee. Did she tell you when she was planning on moving into the into the house that her parents had left? She didn't give an exact time. It was within the next couple months. Did Casey Anthony ever tell you that her daughter was missing? No, sir. Did she ever tell you that her daughter was kidnapped? No, sir. Did she ever tell you that she was out looking for her? No, sir. Did she ever ask you for help? No. The times that you knew for the weeks that you spent uh, acquainted with Ms. Anthony, did you ha ever have the occasion to ride in her car? Yes, sir. When was that? I can't remember the exact date. Was it while she was staying with Clinton and those guys, or was it before? It was while she was staying there. Other than that, did you ever stay, ever go in the car? No. When you were in the car, who were you with? It was with um, Casey, obviously, and Tony and Clint. Okay. Thank you very much. Cross-examination. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Where did you go when you in the car? I believe we just went to get something to eat. And you, Casey, drove. I can't remember who drove. It was okay. either it was either Casey or Tony. And you sat in the passenger side or in the back? I sat in the back seat. Okay. And when you sat in the back seat, did you smell any foul odor? No, sir. Okay. And Clint was with you in the back seat? Yes. And did Clint say, boy, oh, something stinks back here or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. And... What about Tony? Did he say, boy, this car stinks? No, sir. Now, you mentioned that you didn't have a friendship with Casey. Correct. You weren't friends in any way? No, we were acquaintances. And this uh, thin blue dress that uh, she was wearing Um, I'll strike that. Now, you didn't like her being over at the house, did you? It didn't bother me personally. Your boyfriend lived at the house. Correct. And Casey was living at the same house as your boyfriend. Correct. And it struck you odd that she was there all the time. 
Yes, sir. And in fact, you mentioned that you would call your boyfriend and she was there. Yes. And that didn't bother you at all? That she was at the house? She was spending all this time where your boyfriend was? No, it didn't bother me at all. And this is someone, of course, that you had no friendship with and that didn't bother you in any way, shape, or form? No, sir. I'm sorry? No, sir, it didn't. She was dating Tony. No further questions. Okay, may the witness be excused. Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, jury, the time is now approximately six minutes to the hour of noon. We're going to recess for lunch. We're going to recess until 1.15. I'm going to ask uh, that you not discuss this case among yourselves, nor read, watch, listen to any news accounts, and uh, don't do any electronic news gathering on this case. Any additional instructions on behalf of the state or the defense? Okay, we're being recessed to 115.